Traveling the Vortex. We've joined the Brigadier as he defends the world and arrive at episode number 304. Doctor, we've shrunk the brig. I'm Keith. I'm Sean. I'm Glenn. How are you guys? I'm recovering. I'm not well, I'm not fine, I'm not good. I'm recovering. You're recovering. I'm in recovery today. What are you recovering from, Glenn? I had the worst stomach bug I have ever had. Well, at least for a long time. Earlier in the week. You are... Which you, you thought you Better. were coming down with last week. Yeah, I, actually, Friday, well, the, <coughs> Mason was sick over the weekend. And his wasn't near as bad. <laughs> but I, I kind of felt like it was coming on. And then Monday night, it hit me like a ton. Of, actually, I was feeling kind of bad Monday, but I went in and went to work because we were gearing up for elections on Tuesday. And I want to make sure we got everything, you know, ready to go. We, I was actually very excited about elections this time because, as Keith knows, in the past, elections have been... <laughs> shoddy at best for us and uh but we had done a lot of preparing and we we were ramping up for it and i was really excited for it so i went in monday thinking i'll just overcome this i'll be fine and it hit me monday and i was like i need to go home and recover so that i I could be here tuesday and i got up tuesday morning and it was not any better in fact it was 10 times worse and then i finally called at noon and said i'm just not going to be able to do it so i pretty much was out all of tuesday i maybe Opened my eyes a couple of times to see some returns on election day. Um, didn't wake up until I went to take the kids to school Wednesday morning, and still felt horrible. But it wasn't the stomach stuff was gone. It was just all soreness and everything. So, oh, the the achiness, the achy, that's it just oh, yeah. and, it, and I, it hurt to move. It hurt to walk. I, mean, I was wincing at work, and people were like looking at me, going, "Oh, <coughs> are you okay?" <laughs> But, and it, it's you know it, I'm I'm much better now. I actually started getting a head cold then on Thursday, and so but that wasn't there. I mean you know, after weathering the stuff on Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday and Friday were no problem, and then Saturday was probably the first time I started feeling, you know, back to normal, mm. and then tonight I'm much better. So that's good. I'm in recovery. <laughs> I'm glad you're in recovery. That's pretty much all I did this week. Too, Let's go so. back to the important part. You're not contagious, right? I shouldn't be. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't come over to my house with stomach bugs. I shouldn't be. No, if, I didn't if anything, anything you would have done it last Sunday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if anything, you got it. You would have got it from me because it's in it's in the incubation period that you're uh, in danger. Once, so once you, you brought it with uh, with you last week. Yeah. Once Monday and Tuesday hit, I'm no longer contagious because I'm full blown. So that's how viruses work. And then, well, that explains a lot about my week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm invincible. Once I, took I a hit flu it, break, shot at once work, I break the like, fever, I should it. be okay. So. I've never had a flu shot before. I feel like I've got. Well, that's not. That won't do anything for the stomach bug. Doesn't matter. Head. I'm invincible. <laughs> that'll, that'll take care of the whole. Head I have. Code I have. I have head code. Head um, cold. Head code. <laughs> what, what, what is this? I have the super serum. Super serum <laughs> running through my veins. <laughs> I'm ready. Bring it on. My Captain America shields up, and I'm flinging diseases away from me left and right. Is it, is it uh, Captain America or is it a Coulson shield? <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, too. <laughs> that thing's pretty awesome. Digital Coulson shield. What'd you guys do this week? We watched The Crown. All ten episodes in a Jeez, week. Jeez, wow. Yeah. That's how good it is. It is really good. That's the new Netflix yeah. series. And Matt Smith does a really good job in it. Okay, I have to ask. Is it really that good, or is it just that good because Matt Smith is in it? <laughs> He's not in it as much as you as much as I would like to have been. Well, well that's be, obviously that's becoming a uh, <laughs> that's becoming a theme. Uh, I didn't know if I'd like. Uh, He's in Terminator Genesis. Not much. Not much. He's, He's, in, He's uh, in this at least more Prejudice than that. And zombies. <laughs> not much. <laughs> He's in it more than that too. Uh, Not just because there's more of it to be in. So he's <laughs> ramping his part up a little bit. And his parts up a little bit. I mean, he does play Philip, and Philip has a big role. Yeah, the husband. Uh, uh, I didn't know how I'd feel about John Lithgow as Winston Churchill, but he does a really good job. John Lithgow as Winston mm-hmm. Churchill. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's something that I thought, no, that won't, that no. But it, so let me get this straight. You got an American guy to play an English guy? He, I Not just the only English one. guy. The English guy. He's the only American in the show too. <laughs> but it's got Ben Miles in it too from uh, Coupling. <laughs> it's just really well done. It's the the my one complaint with it is 
unlike other Netflix series and most other series, it didn't feel like it ramped up to a finale. It just kind of continued to a finale, and it wasn't really too much of a finale. <laughs> it just continued to a finale. Well, it, that's good. I'm it, glad it continued to. A well, finale. And, and it didn't. It felt. I want more. It doesn't feel like a finale either. You know how most seasons feel like. Okay, if it ended there, that'd be okay. And I, I suppose I could feel that way about this, but I want another season because it ends enough of a not not a cliffhanger, but. Leaves me wanting more. It, it wrapped up kind of the big storylines of the season, but it's still there's so much more of her reign left to do that. Because uh, what they had four kids, right? They have four kids. By the time the first season ends, there's still only two. There's two more still to be born. So there's still a lot going on, or a lot to happen in the so, show. So Matt Smith did a lot in this series. He did some. <laughs> It's a very different character for him. Now, this is not the one with um, Jenna. She's in a different... No, that's Victoria. That's a different queen thing. That's okay. a much earlier queen. <laughs> Whole different queen. <laughs> Whole different queen. Much different queen. Well, uh, I, I was I, thinking they were in separate ones, but I was like, wow, that could be really kind of awkward. I didn't know way, uh, Jared Harris was in this. Oh, I like Jared Harris. He plays the dad. Me too. I like Jared Harris. Who's that? <laughs> um... <laughs> you looked at me like I was kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Really, Moriarty. Oh, right. And gotcha. The new yeah. the Sherlock Holmes. Gotcha. And John Lennon and two of us. Gotcha. He played King Edward. No, King George. Edward is his brother. The stutterer. The stutterer. Yeah, got one. <laughs> Colin Firth. I'm so excited. <laughs> Edward's the stutterer. Oh. No, George is the... George, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I got it backwards. The, yeah. Edward was the first one. Edward is the one that got abdicated one. the crown. Yeah. Yeah. So he played Colin Firth. Birdie. Okay, got Colin it. Firth. Birdie, yeah. Birdie. Where's that timeline? I thought you were going to put that together. <laughs> <laughs> this does a really good job flashing Brent, back to I got to Brenda that. working on a timeline for us. So. <laughs> she kind of gave us one. She did. Well, I'm like, I'm, I have Brenda working on a, like a, a Cliff a Notes detailed. version of it. <laughs> Speaking of Brenda, she had a rough week, so our, our, our thoughts go out to her. I don't know if you guys saw her post on Facebook. She was in and out of the hospital a little bit. And oh, I didn't had see some, that. Had some stuff going on. So, Brenda, we're thinking about you. I hope everything's uh, yeah. getting better. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's, so fine. Just, that's okay. Uh, the only other thing we did was we watched The Legend of Tarzan. Mm. Oh, the new one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're still over. <laughs> All of them on Edgar Rice Burroughs right, adaptation. He likes no, the, Disney like the Disney ones. He loves great. The Disney one. <laughs> <laughs> Which is very rare some... that you hear anybody say <laughs> but, a Disney version. But is I don't like it great. because it's a good adaptation of. Right, because it's not a good <laughs> it's, it's adaptation, not... but it's a fun movie. Yeah, yeah. it is. Uh, there are some interesting things about this one. I like the fact that it's a sequel instead of trying to redo the story. Uh, some of the best parts of it, however, are the flashbacks to him growing up in the jungle. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's different. I don't know how to describe it other than that. It's we should just, do it. We should do a Tarzan. It's been a really long time since thing. I've seen Lord Greystoke. Yeah, I've never seen Greystoke. It's been a really long time since I remember watching that one, thinking there's not enough apes in this. <laughs> <laughs> But I was also a lot younger at the You time. said Lord Greystoke. You mean Lake Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan? Yes, Tarzan. yeah, that one. I didn't know if there was another one out there called there, Lord No, Greystoke. I don't think so. I think that's what, yeah, that's the one I meant. Someone with uh, Christopher Lambert, Christophe. Right? Christoph. Christophe. Christophe Lambert. Yeah. Because he's French or whatever. <laughs> Christopher Lambert. Lambert. And as, no, as questionable as Alexander Skarsgård, I thought, was going to be casting-wise, I thought he did an all right job. He didn't really get a lot to do, like, depth-wise. And they kind of make him a little too invincible in the movie. I think at one point he just shrugs off bullets, <laughs> <laughs> which is an issue. <laughs> the, the, the climax is way beyond suspending belief, even for a Tarzan movie. Are they trying to turn it into their own superhero franchise? I think so. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Christoph Waltz does a pretty good job in it. You know, he's the he's bad guy. He's good in everything. But he, he still is almost, almost too... Uh, Scenery chewing. And Margot Robbie as Jane is just kinda like, really why? They I, I don't I don't understand why they needed to make her American to begin with. Yeah. Huh. You mean Jane wasn't? <laughs> they did some interesting things with it. So if, if you're intrigued, I would say, Yeah, go ahead and watch it. I would I'm glad I didn't pay for it. 
I'm glad I got it from the library. Good to Sarah know. was thoroughly unimpressed. <laughs> Good to know. What did you, you do? Uh, I shot a short film. Oh, when's that coming out? I don't know yet. I got to edit it now. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm actually January. Kind of... <laughs> 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 I still have a book to write, man. <laughs> My nano writemo got put on hold so I could finish the script. With it. No, I, I, I've kind of been yeah, kicking around this isn't thing. Isn't writing the script part of nano writemo? Yeah, that's why I'm counting. Yeah, right. See, there you go. <laughs> I take all these words and, and words. put it toward that word count. Um, no, I we we talked about doing a, a film fest this weekend. Uh, and Dave didn't know if he was going to be available or not, and he kind of leading up to it, leading up to it. And so, you know, Thursday, I was like, so are we doing this? I don't know yet. <laughs> okay, Friday, are we doing this tonight? No. Okay. But because I had already blocked out time and kind of told, you know, work and other people, it's like, I'm doing this this weekend, and a couple people are like, yeah, let me know. I'd be down for helping. I just decided, it was like, well, I blocked out a weekend to shoot a film. I'm going to go shoot a film. So I had this other uh, the short idea that had kind of been kicking around in my head for a while, and I polished off the script and sent it out, and everybody was like, wow, this is really kind of cool. So that made me feel good. Um, so we did some shooting uh, Saturday and got about a little over half of it done and then finished up the rest today. And now it's in that I'm coming down off of that shooting high, even though it wasn't the panicked just swamp stricken well, weekend kind of, of a forty eight hour film two fest. Days to do it. But yeah, um it was a it was it was a much, much lighter I mean I think maybe all told we probably had about eight hours of filming, but it still felt like a very, very busy two days. Well it's a little different when and, you're the director uh, too. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> oh hey man. But um I I'm I've I've seen a couple of the shots that we've gotten off of it and I'm I'm pretty jazzed. It's going to look a little different, I think, than most of the stuff I've put together so far. So I'm really excited. But I'll let you know when, when I have that one done. And then uh, the title's still forthcoming because I haven't decided what I'm going to name it. The first title I had sucked. So, And then we went and took the plunge and snuck off to Kansas City to go see Flash Gordon at the Alamo <laughs> on the big screen. And oh my god, it was the greatest thing ever. I've never seen Flash on the big screen. I'm a little jealous. Oh, Wait, what? You've never seen it on the big I've screen? I've never ever? seen it on the big screen oh. ever. I missed it when, I think I saw it probably on one of those HBO, it yeah, was on every, yeah. and, uh, I mean, it was an HBO st- staple, and I watched it many times, but I saw it in the theater. Yeah, didn't see it in the theater, oh, so, uh, and, the, you know, they had the guys out there, and they were asking, so who, just out of curiosity, who has not seen it, and probably a full third of the audience. Wow. Hands went up, and that's what their that's reaction was, we're like, oh, okay, who saw it in theaters the when it came out the first time? a third of the audience hands went wow. up. So I was like, okay, we're really well represented here. Was this a screening or was it a quote along? It was just a screening. Okay. They did some trivia beforehand. And then, I mean, I can't tell a lie. There may have been some quoting going on in my section. <laughs> <laughs> because every time Brian Blessed showed up, I was ready. <laughs> um, and I think I scared the two guys that were hosting it because they said, hey, can we we get ready for, well, let's, can you give me a little... Flash, and then he held the microphone out, and man, I belted out my ah, uh, uh, and he was kind of like, "Wow, these guys are ready." So, <laughs> um, but it, it was it was just it was so much fun, and it just it, that's that's the kind of a atmosphere you want for that movie. And the the people who hadn't seen it, they laughed at all the right stuff, even the stuff that's a little, you know, it's a cornball joke, and yeah, you know it yeah. is. But man, they, they, they the stuff that you don't think is a joke, but it's still funny. Strikes just funny. They laughed at that, and there were a couple people that were getting down toward the end, and the thump 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 thump, the thing's on fire, and he's coming toward the thing, and they're leaning forward in their seat, just riveted to this. <laughs> and I've got this big stupid grin plastered on my face, and I leaned over to James, uh, shocked the monkey, who went with us, and the credits are rolling, and they had it cranked. Oh man, they had just blaring this thing, and I was really excited about that too, because sometimes you get into these older films and they're not they're not yeah. there but they they cranked the queen and i leaned over to james and i said you know every time i watch this movie i get to this point in the credits and i know we talk about it being oh it's a guilty pleasure i know we talk about it being oh it's so bad it's good i know we talk about the cheese factor i get to this point in the credits after watching it my face hurts from smiling so much and i go <laughs> no this is a perfect movie <laughs> there's absolutely nothing wrong with this film it is the pinnacle of filmmaking everything else falls short <laughs> That's where I'm coming down on Flash Gordon. I'm putting it at the top of my list from now on. It's just, it is that great. Yes, it is. Don't even, don't even give me that look. <laughs> it is that great. And uh, 
uh, Patrick and Chris came with us, uh, and you know, I, them no, let me let me both of them were like, "Oh my God, what have I been missing out on my whole life?" How let me Patrick let me interject here. Let me interject here. I probably feel the same way as I'm watching the film, but then when I'm done, I start to reflect <laughs> on it and go, "You know what? I think it's that emotion that gets you in that spot." <laughs> sure, it's that emotion that gets you in that place. I'm not going to deny and then that. After you come down off of it, you're like. All right, it's got some flaws. <laughs> nope. I'm going to live in that emotion from now on. <laughs> That's my happy place. And after this week, with everything that happened politically, I think I need to live in my happy place. So that's that's all I'm going to say about that. But, uh, no, we had a great time. And like I said, Patrick had never seen it. I was kind of blown away. I was like, what do you mean you've not seen it? As much as I've talked about Flash Gordon, we've been friends for 10 years, and you still haven't watched this yet? <laughs> and so I said, and? He goes, my God, that was fun. I was like, no. <laughs> right? So... Great, great, great time. Of course, then it was, you know, 2.30 in the morning by the time we got back because it was the late show at Alamo. <laughs> yeah, I saw that it was to 10.30. But don't care. Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. Came home, <laughs> crashed, got up today, shot the rest of the thing. So that was my weekend. I... What do we got in the news, Keith? Well, if you guys didn't see on our Facebook, uh, Ty Meddy's had a bit of a change of heart and bringing it back next year. We October are... 20th oh. through the 22nd in Wichita, Kansas. At a change of venue. Oh. The Drury Drury Plaza Hotel Broadview. It's this really neat uh, hotel down in downtown Wichita. Oh. So, might, of course... Might be paying a little bit more for rooms. But there is a discount, okay. a negoti- negotiated discounted room rate. It will, Already. It will be a little bit more than... What it was at the Best Western, yeah. but one nice thing about this one, you can book it online. Oh, you good. don't have to call good. this time, so you can book that now. Oh, it, it's it's available to now. book now, oh. and you can buy tickets to Time Eddie available now. Well, that's probably a good idea. So, all right. And if you're interested, Maybe vendor tables are sure. available yeah. also. Oh, I'm going to book my room probably very soon. So. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to fill up pretty quickly. Yeah. So that's super exciting. No guest yet. Super but. exciting. And by the way, guys, love the logo. Yes. Yeah. It is so cool. I saw that and just went, well, that kind of looks like that would mean oh, it does. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I have to admit, I don't know if it's because I've been working overnight and I've been so tired that a lot of things haven't been seeping into my brain as normal. Kieran gave us a little sneak peek of it before he posted it to Facebook. Yeah. I did not notice that. It said 2017 on the top. Oh. <laughs> I thought, oh, cool, that's the cool logo for next I year. I posted right away. Yay. I thought you were just excited about the logo. <laughs> oh, no. I, I saw that and I was like, oh, we're getting a little dose early. Because they, they hadn't announced they it hadn't anywhere else. It on Facebook. And he directed a message to us and I went, oh, yay. I can't believe this. It wasn't until he posted on Facebook that I realized, oh, it's 2017, <laughs> not 2018. Well, he even said... 2017 20, I, is the I, new 2018. I, I think I saw that as soon as I had gotten up before I had gotten coffee after a short nap and just poof. Oh, wow. And five hours of sleep a day does not do good for things for my brain. <laughs> yeah, that made my day when I saw yeah. that. Yeah. So that's super exciting. So you've all been warned. <laughs> Plenty of notice. You're coming to see us. That's right. At Time 83. Come to next year, 2017. Uh, I know at least three of the five-ish fangirls um, who, when I was listening to their show when they interviewed uh, Karen, said that they were going to um, seriously, strongly consider getting here this year. So I'm going to hold all three of them to it. (laughs) Two two at the very least, but there was a third one that was... <laughs> no, it wasn't. I wasn't. I'm not going to call any names out. No, they, I'm just they know who they are. <laughs> and if you go listen to that episode, you'll know who they and are. All five of them oh, now are listening. Call, thanks all, for calling me out, Keith. All five of them are now sitting no, here I'm listening. No, to the listener. It's a good. I shot a there. short film this weekend. I haven't listened to my podcast yet. All five of them that is listening right now is going. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't me. So I know there are times after we record that I think back. And somebody comments, oh, was that me? <laughs> I don't remember what I say always, so. I'm so glad you guys liked that. I don't remember what that. I say ever, so. <laughs> so glad you guys liked that. Did we like that one? Okay, yeah. <laughs> We're glad we did, too. <laughs> oh, our next bit of news is we come off the high of that to some sad news. I should have probably scheduled that otherwise, but. 
Doctor Who experience is going to close. I know. The likelihood of us going out there anyways anytime soon was going to be certainly, pretty Certainly awesome. before closing has dropped dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> next year is when they're going to close. The lease is up. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> That's what I read somewhere. Yeah. I don't know how true that is, but I'd say our, the our, lease our is Our five-year sublease from the City of Cardiff Council will come to an end at summer 2017. There's a... Uh, um, so it's, I suppose it's possible they could renegotiate it. There is a starter, startup campaign, whatever they go start, whatever those pay campaigns are on, now to get rent money for five more years <laughs> <laughs> well that's one of the things i mean i i'm go fund me i think is one thing. I, I i've seen the petitions and everything that everybody's oh you gotta get this and it's like okay i mean i i understand the passion i understand the desire the lease is up guys there's n- now yes maybe there should be a fundraising or not fundraising but maybe there should be a campaign for the city of cardiff to say hey we'd like to extend you a lease because this is such a huge tourist thing i'm gonna st- but, take, i'm gonna take one step further i'm gonna say all that GoFundMe money should be going towards a tour and bring it to all the major cities. Oh, yeah. UK and US. Actually, uh, y- yes. I'm down with that, too. Mm-hmm. That's even better than... Let's tour that hopefully, thing. Ho- hopefully it'll be better bring than the... Bring it to the, more uh, people that way, too. Hopefully it will be better than the traveling uh, 18-wheeler that I went and saw <laughs> <laughs> that had, like, three props. You know I, what? I question the I don't care. I'm such a fan. I would have been just eating that up. All three props. <laughs> oh, I did. I went through it, like, seven times while we were there. But <laughs> Yeah. No, I'd prefer it to be something more, but, yeah, I, that's fine, too. There were more than three, but there wasn't many more than three. Uh-huh. Well. And a section of the TARDIS console that wasn't the TARDIS console. I was a little, a little disappointed with that. But. Oh, well. It was like a pie wedge they had put in a corner, but yeah. it wasn't wasn't the real one. Right. It was the wrong color. It was made of wood. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I distinctly remember my 12-year-old Anything else disappointment. On the news uh, yes, one last bit of news. Uh, there's going to be a novelization of the Pirate Planet coming out in January. Written by James Goss. And that's the last... Douglas Adams one that has not been novelized yet, right? Yes. Because yeah, there only did were three. three. There's yeah. only three. Uh, the interesting bit of this one, because hasn't this one been novelized before? Didn't no, Target do all of Key to Time? I don't, I don't believe any of the Douglas Adams. None of the Douglas Adams. Because okay. they were tied up in, in rights problems. Well, rights the, this will be based on a long forgotten draft of the script found in Douglas Adams' archive. Oh. Which I mean, I mean, so that I, means it could be very different from. I'm what actually was on excited television. for that because, in reality, Pirate Planet was molded to fit within the Key of Time arc, and I think if you're going to write that story by itself, it would be interesting to allow it to fit in with Key of Time and be a standalone yeah. story. And I think that 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 might be the goal. So. so the script has been unseen for 40 years and is vastly different from the actual episodes. Hmm. The nice thing about that is it'll be. It, it's inspired by Douglas Adams, so there'll be a lot of Adams, Adamsy stuff there. But um, it will be virtually a new story for those of us fans too. So yeah, set within those trappings. Any idea when that's coming? January this fifth. Year, this coming January? January fifth. <laughs> He's excited. January fifth. <laughs> I didn't see that date before. The fifth. This this like January twenty seventeen. Well, you know what? We I, didn't just unearth it. <laughs> I, th- I think we may have to uh, schedule some Pirate Planet action on the uh, fr- Friday Night Who for end of January. Give us enough time to for January sixth. No, it'll be, <laughs> uh, if it comes out on the fifth, that'll be a Wednesday. Why do you yell so at me be, about going so out about be stuff that nobody cares of, about? It'd be the end, of, <laughs> the end of December. Why? Well, you're going to put it on there. Oh, it's a Thursday. Yeah, we well, so have to have time to read. The it'll book. be in December. We got to read the book. Once it comes out, we're going to read the book. We're right, going to read the, the book, book the week before. We're wow. going to get you get us a book the week before it releases. Glenn. Oh, yeah, I guess that's right. <laughs> I've gotten so used to Candy Jar giving us preview copies of stuff. I forgot we we have to actually Let, let's get the book. let's write the BBC books. Let's find out. Okay, so it is on January sixth. We'll do Byron a Planet, and then we'll review it on Sunday. So we get it the fifth. We watch Planet Planet on we'll the sixth, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we, Sunday to read the book. And then when we record on the except the eighth, we'll we'll have uh, it'll just be Pirate Planet Week. Oh, well, I'm fine with it. How many parts I'm, is that? Four or six? I don't remember. Dee, all of a sudden, dee, dee, four. It's got to be four. Dee, dee, dee. Four. Because the only one of Key to Time that is six is uh, Armageddon. 
It is four. Yes. Mine like a So it can't be too long, right? <laughs> I can read a book in five days. I don't know. Days. I suppose it depends Three on how days. vastly different it is from <laughs> <the games. laughs> That's true. I don't no, definitely put it on the schedule for January. Chapters 947 through 963, they go to Earth. I don't remember any of this in there. <laughs> Sean's eyes lit up because he, he's he been trying to fill holes in the schedule for January. And he went, oh, I've got something for January. <laughs> Sean's eyes lit up because he really likes Pirate Planet. Well, he's yeah. ready to watch it again. Yeah. And I, I don't know why, but I kind of use this podcast as an excuse. <laughs> I could just go pop the DVD in and watch it. <laughs> no, I kind of wait around for an opportunity to foist my loves on everybody I, else. I use this uh, uh, podcast as an opportunity for me to uh, fill holes in my collection, my DVD collection. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Friday Night Who this week? I will buy it. <laughs> that's it for news. But I own Pirate Plant, so I don't have to buy that one again. But I have to buy the book, so because we won't get a preview copy of that one. <laughs> Unless I reach out to the publishers... I totally think we should be reaching out to the publishers. Hmm. And you can always say, well, Candy Jar gave it to us. <laughs> <laughs> We've already established relationships. That's right. Because they're cool like that. You don't want to be uncool, do you? <laughs> you want to be at least as cool as our friends at Candy Jar Books, don't you? <laughs> can you tell what we're talking about this week? Wait, have, we, have, we, have, we, have we plugged them enough? What All are we right. talking about this week, Keith? Do we have anything for uh, feedback? We do not. Do you want to let people know where they can... Give us feedback. You can send us feedback to feedback at travelingthevortex.com or go to our website, travelingthevortex.com, and fill out the send us feedback tab. Uh, and if for some reason you have sent us feedback and we haven't read it, let us know because there's th- that's an issue and we need to address it. Uh, or you can also reach out to us on Facebook, Traveling the Vortex, and Twitter at Travel Vortex. What are we reviewing this week, Keith? Havoc Files 2. Or I.I. Nope. Two. <laughs> yeah, it actually says two. <laughs> it's <on> two. It. <laughs> the book right here in front of us. It has a button. I ordered my copy. So we get we get preview copies of of candy jar books, and I still purchase the things because I oh, love to yeah. have them on my shelf. So. Plus, I love giving them my money. And they're putting out such they're, a they're fine worth product. Supporting. I want to support them. Well, Andy didn't sign this one, so. Aww. I even flipped to the story he wrote to see if maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I got put into a bulk order or something. Yeah. Although I, I think I think I have one that he signed. I think he signed Havoc Files for me. I think yeah. I think he signed, yeah. I think he signed all of Havoc Files. He did not sign Beast because he that, that was a Christmas Beast. gift. Oh, that's yeah, right. For Christmas. I have a signed copy of The Grandfather Infestation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Havoc Files. Now, a heads up, we aren't reviewing all of these because some of these we have already reviewed yes. on the show. And so we are actually only doing three, four stories. We're doing four stories. So you, what you want to review, here's the review. If okay. you loved Havoc Files 1, you're going to love Havoc Files 2 because there's twice as much stuff. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite twice, but it's more. Feels like it. Yeah, there's more in here. Well, let's just work our way through the book. Yeah. Starting with House of Giants. Is there a synopsis, Keith? No. Okay, well, let's just jump right in. Dun, dun, dun! <laughs> <laughs> what was this? this the, now, in, in His Kiss starts out this book, but as yes. I said, we were, but, but I skipped ahead to, obviously, uh, House of Giants, because, so this was my first story in this book, <laughs> and man, what a way to start oh, off my yeah. reading, because that was so much fun. And the, t- the, the theme, you guys are going to notice that the theme for these stories is, Tie in to episodes. Oh yes, <laughs> heavily, heavily tie heavily. into episodes. Um, that's what I really liked about this is the fact that it ties into Planet of Giants, and uh, again, the 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 writers with Candy Jar have these very clever, interesting ways of giving you all that you need to know what it's relating to without actually stepping on any sort of copyright. Yeah, and it, it, they they do such a wonderful job in crafting these stories. And uh, if you don't know, House, House of Giants is uh, Actually, takes place sequel. right on um, nearly. I mean, well, it starts right after Planet of Giants when the Protardus dematerializes. There's an energy pulse that gets shot into the attic of the, of the house, house across the street, sword. and uh, basically shrinks the guy in the attic <laughs> and his dog. Um, and then, uh, of course, Anne and 
the brigadier and Bishop show up at the house across the street that's being investigated for the uh, toxic uh, 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 herbicide or whatever. The, the, the DN6. Yeah, yes. uh, the DN6. And uh, run across to the house and they get shrunk too, which I, I wondered how... now. When they set this up, and there was the energy pulse that shrunk. Uh, what's the guy's name? To the book. To the book. Getty. Yes. Was it Getty? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the that shrunk Getty when when the pole energy pulse shrinks Getty and the dog. I thought, okay, that 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 makes sense. That's logical because obviously in in uh, Planet of Giants, the uh, TARDIS crew is shrunk because of the TARDIS. The TARDIS is. As uh, I can't remember exactly what the technical details of it, but there's been a malfunction, and they have actually I believe, and this may be later episodes coloring my my tech skills here, but I think it was the dimensional stabilizer. Yeah, had something it was something, bleeding. Something yeah. technically had had uh, shrunk them, and so I kind of wondered how, you know, just suspecting what this was going to connect to, I wondered how this would work, and so the, that energy pulse that they kind of allude to worked. I thought, okay, that's great. Yeah, it wasn't until. Keith actually spoiled a little bit of the, <laughs> what he thought the episode title this week should be that I suspected what was going to happen. But when I realized that the Brig and Anne and Bishop weren't there when it happened, when it dematerialized, I wondered, is this going to work? Gonna work? How is it? How? Yeah. And having that residual energy still around in that room when they went up the stairs and causing them to shrink, I, you know, it worked just as well. I was yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. That works great. So. And the fact that it was such a temporary thing, even once they got down, back down the stairs, that they grew yes, back to their yes. normal size. And when it, it wasn't until uh, I realized that, that Getty and the dog had never re, had never grown again, yeah. that I kind of thought, okay, how does that work? But that also kind of, they it alludes to the fact that because they were there at ground zero, when the blast hit them, it, it was kind of a thing they were just they were stuck with it so it just, it just worked it worked all the way through from beginning to end it was it was a great little adventure uh with <laughs> using the toothpicks little adventure, <laughs> using the toothpicks as spears and, and uh the, the spider attacks and it was just it was a, a lot of great fun well, and, and it starts out pretty cool before we realize that our main characters are going to shrink because we're investigating this the, the D six or D N six and D6? a great tie into how they get it for or an exploration of how they get it for grandfather infestation exactly. down the road. Yeah. So they've already. And so you it. see that, especially ap- having read that first, it's exciting getting to that point, and yep. then they go to investigate and they shrink, and then it's a big fun hunting guy shrunk the kids adventure <laughs> <laughs> in this attic with spiders and using the spider webbing in order to climb down from the seal. Yeah, and, and, and gonna, falling out, and I thought, what? How are they going to fix this? And then Bishop catching her. She's still, you know, half like the size. Four foot feet tall. <laughs> I kind of wondered as she fell, is, oh, is she going to get bigger as she falls? Yeah, that's and, what I kind of suspected yeah. as well. When she got out and then of the I, And then field. I was worried, oh, no, she's going to have such velocity, like an Ant-Man type thing. The time she got big, it was going to really hurt her. But right. Luckily, luckily was Bishop was there. He was there to catch and, her. And she hadn't, full, she hadn't grown full size. Although it did, it did knock him on the ground yeah. anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb, and, and, and uh, first of all, Rick Cross did an amazing job with this yeah. uh, the writing. It was a lot of fun. I'm going to say he probably grew up on a steady diet of things like Land of the Lost yeah. and uh, 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 the, the Incredible Shrinking Woman mm-hmm. and all those kinds of things that I remember from my <laughs> backlog of bad 80s uh, movie stuff because it's like this is all in there, but not bad. I yeah. mean, it's, yeah. it's just it's – just, <laughs> Pleasure inducing fun. It's, it is. It's, it's, it's so it's it's such a guilty pleasure. I guess maybe and that's that's not even the right word for it because it's not guilty about it at all. It's just fun. It's a, no, it's I'm a glad. I'm story. glad to admit that I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to throw props out for his uh, the um, uh, what the bloomin' eck was that? It sounded like a sea lion in distress, whopping and groaning. <laughs> Rick, I've read a lot of uh, <laughs> I've read a lot of TARDIS de- dematerialization descriptions, and I chuckle each time I get one that's a little different <laughs> than something I've heard before. And I go, "That was cool." You give me- take the cake, man. That was all right. I've never I've never heard that one. So, props for that. Yeah. But uh, just a 
fun and kind of what you said, Glenn. I, I did the same thing. I skipped in his kiss because we'd already reviewed that one. Went straight into this one, and it was just like, oh man, I, it's going to be hard to. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm sorry, the rest of the authors, you guys are going to be hard pressed to top this because we started <laughs> off with such a, a great adventure story here, and I like you. I was a little, once the brig shrunk. I was like, okay, now obviously we're going to fix it. You know, we we know that we know that's going to happen. We know they're going to get out of it, but at the same time, it's like. I this could is, have done a little bit more with him shrunk. I, I expand this a little bit. I a couple more, or at least double the length. I, I, this, 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 this is one that, as much fun as it was, and when it was over, with big goofy smile on my face again and everything, I was kind of like, "This could have been a whole novel." I'd have been all right with yep. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially since he had such a good grasp of all the characters and the dynamics of describing a new world. Yeah, yeah, especially that. But um, I kind of, I, I kind of wonder, is like, how does this affect the Briggs mindset of you know? Dude, you were shrunk. <laughs> you should be more open to things, but it didn't matter. It's just, you know. I love when he comes out of the house and he's he's talking and he sounds like he's on helium. <laughs> How goofy that would sound. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Really all good. around, all around, a lot of fun. Uh, so that one connected to um, uh, Planet of Giants, and then the next story was. Ashes of the Inferno. <laughs> Directly Which, set after Inferno. Right after Inferno. <laughs> In fact, they're cleaning up the mess after Inferno. Uh, another one that... Now, now this was... I, I, I don't know that I enjoyed this one as much, but I thought this was an interesting way to kind of put a little bit of a bow on James's character. Uh, the James from uh, Schizoid Earth is the subject of this one. And I, I, I really kind of like the. It, it seemed like. It seems like James was kind of just that James, that world James, Inferno World James was was kind of out there, and nothing had been done. And so I think that this so, was so much so that I had forgotten that they brought him back from Inferno. World. Right, right. So <laughs> so we started this, and I was like, wait, what? And I had to go double check. And, oh yeah, that did happen. Yeah, both the brig and and yeah. uh, him had come. I, I misremembered it by the time I finished it, and so. Uh, I like how it uh, kind of puts some closure for James as far as a character within this world because I've always kind of felt like James is well, we, we're finishing up season two of this and this world that world James was clear back in the second book of last year and so that James has always been kind of out there and in the back of my mind I've always wondered what, what, what's going on with that character and I don't want to say that this was kind of maybe the Andy wrote this one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I don't know that this was Andy's way of maybe s- sidelining this character because they didn't really have plans for him. I don't even think it was sidelining him. I think it was more of a hey, let's let's finish this story. Let's well, let's, let's put some closure the way it's on done it. is because it's later for James it, and and it is much and Alistair. Time. I mean, they could still revisit the character in the intermediate time. That's true. That's true. Um, but it was also really cool that they tied into something that was much later and even in the third Doctor's era. Yes. And because we had kind of set that up and uh, tied that to that world to kind of readdress that on the heels of that, you know, the connection that it has to Doctor Who, I thought was very clever and, and pretty cool. This is another one that I, it's just, as, as usual with Andy, we've come to expect exceptionally well written. You, you can't argue anything there. And I, I, I was kind of. With you, I don't know that I enjoyed it necessarily less than than Planet of Giant or uh, House of Giants, because I think it's still as good and entertaining. It's a completely different feel uh, story. More, it doesn't have more, the same mood. Yeah, as the it's, first it's, story. and it's and, it's a more emotional story. It is more emotional, and especially coming off of, I'm really glad that we watched Inferno um, the past two weeks to, to kind of come into this because it really helped set the mood for it and. Uh, for everybody's love of Inferno, Inferno is kind of a downer. I mean, really, when you get to the end of it, that all well, half your characters don't wind up making it out of it, and uh, you know, the Earth blows up, and that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> and, you know, so there's, there's a lot of yeah, the Doctor survives, but everything else is kind of uh, kind of there and, and and being dealt with. And so to come right on the heels of it and kind of wrap up not only the Inferno part because I've always, and I, I think I I think I'm pretty sure I said this on record that I, I, as much as I like Inferno, I also feel like it very strangely shouldn't work as an episode because it's it's two different stories that just kind of got 
stuck together. Yeah. They didn't feel that the drilling episode was quite long enough, and so they gave it the alternate universe thing. And I still feel like there's some of the primordial ooze stuff that doesn't explain why they turn into green werewolves. And I, I don't care. It's it's fun. All right. But you, you get to the end of it, and it's nice to have a little epilogue for it. And it doesn't resolve any of the big issues of it. It's just set after that story. And they're, they are cleaning it up and kind of dealing with it. And cleaning up is kind of the theme of this, because I, I agree with you. I think Andy's kind of cleaning up after James. I think that once they brought the character in, that we kind of went, well, now we don't know what to do with him. And I don't know if it's always been the plan that since he was tied to Inferno that they were going to you know, need to expire him, if you will, when Inferno World expired. <laughs> But it, it, it works. It so beautifully works that those two, that's that they are still connected in this way. Um, and I just remember thinking, wow, that is it's such a powerful ending for that. And, and uh, it worked. It worked so well for me. I, I agree with everything you, you just said. <laughs> and it's not just because my character finally makes his appearance. There was a, uh, <laughs> there was a certain Captain Miles. Yeah. I, uh, I, I did latch onto that in this so one. So that means I stick around through the establishment of unit. Yeah. And into the Third Doctor's era. And he left a small unit there with me to uh, oversee things. So I'm obviously responsible. <laughs> <laughs> not the villain we thought I was going to be. Yet. Yet. <laughs> Ooh, maybe you're the one that turns Mike Yates onto the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> don't don't gloat too much. The uh, story you didn't read, Bartlett's in that one. Oh, is he? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just we'll glad I finally. I'm just glad you're I finally just appeared. You're finally there, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so good stuff. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, again, I I think I I'm very pleased with kind of the, the way they gave some closure to And he does and, such a good job. And and the, the, the idea that he's still connected to that world. Yeah. I think is 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 done very well. It's 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 painted very clearly. And uh, uh, having to get back there, having that draw back to that energy. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and he just does such a good job of of whenever you read some of these stories that are sort of overlap with other stories where you know they kind of have to script those lines or they don't want to... I always appreciate when it's done well, where you can tell what's happening without being too explicit of mm-hmm. what's happening in the other bit of media uh, when they overlap. And he does such a good job with that aspect of it, too. Well, because he's, t- he's technically stitching together, uh, obviously, Inferno, but he's also got bits of Forgotten Sun and uh, Schizoid Earth Yeah, that he's he's worked into this as well. And uh, so it's... It, it, very much uh, flows with those, and uh, it's it's impressive when you can take, you know, he's got three different media sources that he's working from, basically, and, yeah. and, and putting all those stories together to come up with a capstone for him. Um, I really, really liked the ending, um, where I, I'm excited to see that we're going to get more of, uh, of Owen. Yeah, the fact that yeah. he would call about that right. was a good character moment for the bridge. Yeah. yeah. And I'm excited to see where they go with uh, with that. Well, next, kind of tying into the which well, sure, yeah tying uh, in the, the well the, the the first two stories that we reviewed now tie really uh, obviously into the Left Stewart universe, but tie into. Uh, specific elements within the Doctor Who universe as well, TV. specific TV stories. The next two stories that we're going to do actually tie into, directly into novels that we have reviewed within the Lethbridge Stewart universe. Yeah, next is Schottengeist's First Love. <laughs> <laughs> so this was an, a part of the novel that was cut, which I just blanked on his name. Jonathan Cooper. Jonathan Cooper talked about when we interviewed him. Yeah, he did. Um, and interestingly enough, the, the way I come down on this story is I enjoyed this. And I'm very, very glad it got pulled out of the Showstoppers. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it really would it really would have dragged the Showstoppers into, a, into kind of a, a lull, I think, at this point. That being said, it's wonderful as an excerpt short story. And the reason being is because after you learn everything you can about... Schottengeist in the Showstoppers, 
this goes in and gives you it's like an it's like a dvd extra it gives you kind of some background yeah. or some some extra meat to that character that you didn't necessarily get and well, you didn't need it so much because i think it's conveyed well enough in the story to stand alone you don't need this but it gives you that extra layer of that character which i really appreciate and it, and it works really well reading it after you finish the show stoppers because it, it lets you i think if had we read this mid book not knowing the cinephore and what it was, we siphonophore. It would have been a lot more confusing while reading it. But after the fact, you understand so much of what's going on in the story more so than if it were early. I think it will it would have ruined the reveal. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, I think so. the reveal yeah. would have been completely yeah destroyed. And so reading it in hindsight works. And I don't better. remember if it was in the review of Showstoppers or in the interview with John and Cooper where I had made the comment that I felt like I wanted more of what the backstory of this was and that I was really intrigued and curious. And then I got to this and I started reading it and went, oh, this is exactly <laughs> what I wanted. Yeah. And I 100% agree with you. I got done with it and went, that was fantastic. I'm so glad it wasn't in the book. <laughs> <laughs> and again, not because there's anything wrong with it. No, it, it just, it, wrong. But the, it would have changed the pacing. The pacing of Showstoppers yeah. is so good that inserting this big chunk of backstory would have just derailed everything and it still would have been fun and interesting and oh, cool. But then to get back into that the, the, the fun adventure story, I think it, it just would it just wouldn't work. So. And as you said, it would have it would have it would have really ruined the reveal. Yeah, because the reveal is such a, a monumentous uh, momentous occasion or instance in this book. And so, knowing where this went to up to this point it would have kind of like brought that down. And, and, and it's not like you could have put that. that after the reveal because then we're at the big climax, right? And so and you've got to keep trucking through that climax. Yeah, you couldn't have stopped. Yep. Still good stuff. And Jonathan Cooper, I still really like his writing style. I think he's yeah. he's really, really, really a good writer. Uh, and what's cool, it's it felt like there was some stuff in this that, I don't know if it's be, before or after the fact, that they pulled ideas and hinted at these sort of things in the story, like him, uh, well, they flat out said later that Shot and Geist surrendered to the allies yep, and, yep. and so and we knew he had it was nice yeah. to s read and see all of well, those where things the, that where montague's name comes from it was basically just his yeah uh, uh reintegration name they were yeah. you know they gave him a name because they were giving him a political asylum in order to do experiments and and work for the u.s army and so coming up with the, the name montague I and seeing the real shepstone yeah the real shepstone yeah who didn't play as big of a role or as action -y as I thought he would. Well, he didn't, but I think that was kind of cool because you get the impression from the showstoppers that they're these, like, you know, arch rivals yeah. and they're <laughs> always had, you know, they, in, in a television story, they would have continually been going back and forth, you know, uh, Dudley Do Right and Snidely Whiplash against each other the whole time. And the reality of it is, is that is complete fantasy because the reality of it is, is Shipstone just came in and basically he was the buffer that, uh, that, kind of talked the Americans into going along with Guy's plan. And there was there was no, you know, parachute in behind enemy lines in order to... Yeah. I mean, he did. He got shot down. He he was behind enemy lines. He ended up catching up with the American unit. And But I like the fact that framed differently, it kind of shows you how much of a fantasy or a story this had become within the characters <laughs> of Montague's. Yeah. I think it also works on that... Um... Because there's the one line where um, Schottengeist is kind of wishing that Shepstone would come back and visit him. Like, the, he, he kind of longs for <laughs> having that relationship. And I think in his isolation and his mental deteriorating state, that maybe when he got to the point to have this grand TV show, that it made perfect sense for Shepstone to be the foil yeah, and to to have that relationship that he's probably built that up in his head this whole time that they are going to be great villains and they're going to be these arch enemies and they're going to be these things because of their his begrudging respect for the man that doesn't really exist. Yeah, it, yeah. it just that he <laughs> well, built this whole thing up, and I thought, wow, that's really. But even to the to the more to further the extent, I think it's the Savonifor that kind of molds that relationship because the Savonifor is the one that's creating the. Uh, copies yeah. of yeah. Uh, Montague. And so I think it's cultivating 
that maybe sub ego uh what you you know as you were saying what how how shot guys kind of looked at things because they all became caricatures of shot guys actual subconscious and mm-hmm. so yeah i think that 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 even more so is why there's almost that 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 farcical element to everything because that's how the siphonophore was you know projecting it portraying yeah. it as it was, was creating these copies so yeah and it was also interesting to, to read about Schottengeist experimenting and forcing evolution on it, and it really helps lend to that turning against him that it does at the end. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Which, how satisfying was that? Did anybody, was anybody concerned or, or worried or felt bad for I didn't. No, I no, was no, very, no, no. yeah, get and, him. And <laughs> this adds more fuel to that fire. <laughs> No, yeah. I mean from the big, from the get go, he was infiltrating the Americans as a a ruse that he was going to help them create super soldiers. But he was still had this mad plan of be you know f- f- mad power. You know, I mean it, it was all it was all a ruse, and so you don't like the guy from the beginning. So when it happens, which we know it's going to happen because we saw the result of the <laughs> showstoppers, but no, there was not one Good. point at all that I was like, <laughs> nope. oh poor shot guys. No, I, his I, I, love turned against him. <laughs> there, there, there shouldn't be. It was just. It was one of those. When the villain finally gets the comeuppance, it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was very even describing it with the razor sharp teeth and the needles and tendrils going in his brain. It's like you deserve all this. Yep. yep, yep. And unfortunately, you're still going to be around well, after. <laughs> and the fact that he was so so blindsided by it too. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. So the, the, the arrogance of the man that he was, you know, doing all these experimentations and never once thought that he was in danger. And I was like, haha. <laughs> or even hurting it either. Yeah, yeah. The fact that he didn't even think that. It gives a lot more sympathy to the Savanaphore. Well, yeah. I think he I was conscious was of I think he was conscious of the fact that he was hurting it. And the reason being is because there's that line that sometimes you have to hurt the one you love. Well, so I think okay, he's conscious true. that he's doing it, but he thinks Just, it's for the greater good. And while he still has this unhealthy love for this creature, I think he was aware that he was, was hurting it. I think he just thought, you know, he wasn't Torturing it, yeah. which he, which it was he obviously yeah. it was, but that's the next one. So good. So that one connected uh, to the showstoppers, and then the next one is Exodus from Venus, which connects to another of our favorite books from by John Peel. It's the original prologue from the novel of Grandfather Infestation. Once again. Glad they pulled it from the book. <laughs> it's a great prologue. It it's is a, a great it's prologue. A, it's a cool it, it, story. I, I, I think, our, if I remember correctly, we all re- thought it would have been interesting to learn a bit more about the stone creatures. And, yep. and this kind of gives us that. We don't. We don't get much more about the stone creatures. We get much more about the grandfather. Oh, that's true. And, and the, and the uh, uh, colonization of their species. Uh, I didn't get anything more about the stone creatures other than they were still these... I guess we got well, yeah, and the names. And yeah, exactly. Uh, the the neat tie was at the end, which I wonder how much of that was actually in the uh, uh, prelude to this, whether or prologue, excuse me, that uh, whether they are actually name dropped the two that we end up with that end up going to Earth, because oh, I yeah. I think that it was very clever that. It, it was almost a nice. Oh, I, I know these two. We're familiar with these two. Yeah. And so I thought that was kind of cool. Again, I think though, dropping us into the action and allowing us to, uh, un- be uh, the uh, grandfathers be and the and the uh, the rock creatures. I don't remember their names. Why, the Wymir. Yeah. Wymir. Um, getting them or to in be, this Wowens. 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 The uh, but getting them. Uh, uh, introduced throughout the story and, 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 and revealing a little bit more about the grandfathers worked a lot better in the in context of grandfather infestation as opposed to giving me all this upfront information that they're invading that they've tried to go to Venus it was unsuccessful so they moved on to Earth yeah. and I like the fact that we learn about that in the story and I think that would have ruined it but now again as Schottengeist's first love did with uh, the showstoppers this does the exact same thing where you get that little bit more of a nugget mm-hmm. of we already know this much, and this gives us just a little bit more, and I like that as well. 
One hundred percent agree. I, it's it was a nice little interlude. I don't think it would have worked in, uh, exceedingly well as a prologue um, within the confines of book. So I, I, I say bravo to the editing decision that uh, that removed it and allowed us to just get into grandfather infestation the way that we did. Um, and you know it's fine. I, I like having it. I'm glad that I read it it's, and it's including it in the, in the in the in the book here. It's the perfect way to do it because um, I don't think. It just—it wasn't necessary. Grandfather infestation stood so strongly on its own that it didn't need the prologue. Which is funny because I wonder if it's easier to do that in hindsight to say I'm glad they didn't put this in there because this works so much better once you've already read it. Because I wonder if we went back to Moonblink, had they pulled that whole prelude or a uh, prologue, a prelude prologue, prologue out of uh, Moonblink? I wonder if we would have been and set it aside and put it as a sword story. I wonder if we would have done the same thing because it's, it's that's one an of those interesting stories, idea. It's one of those stories that's drastically different than what the setup is, and it's just co- connected based on telling us what's going on at this point. Yeah. So I kind of wonder had we read Moonblink without the prelude and then went back or uh, prologue. I don't know why you mix those two up. They're essentially, yeah. they're essentially same, the same, same thing. But uh, and then got the prologue later. If we'd have been saying the same thing, I'm glad they pulled the prologue out. So <laughs> I wonder if that's yeah. just that's you know tainted because of the fact that we experienced Showstoppers and uh, uh, Grandfather Infestation the way we did. It's the beauty of hindsight that we you know are afforded oh, that yeah. opportunity to go back and look at these things. Um, obviously, you know they were cut for reasons. We don't know why. Maybe it was a budgeting thing. Maybe they ran out of paper. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to cut something. Well, I guess we'll cut this. Okay, but uh, it just it wound up, I think, being better for the books. Yeah, definitely. To, to have these and and like I said, not that I didn't enjoy them. I thought both pieces were were excellent. And it's and so great that intriguing. we still got to enjoy these these bits that they were that were cut from the books. Yeah, that's another thing is I you know I I I, I don't want to you know. But sometimes you cut stuff and you cut it for a reason. Sometimes you cut stuff because it didn't work or the characterization wasn't working or the dialogue was clunky or you realized I just don't need this scene. Whatever it happens to be, you cut it. And sometimes that stuff deserves to stay buried. <laughs> that you just, it, it, you know, it didn't work. It wasn't needed. Let it go. But then sometimes you get stuff that's like, man, you I just really love this bit. I wish that, you know. So this is kind of a perfect way to do that and go, this was really good. Let's go ahead and still give people a glimpse into what it was or, or show them what could have been and at least have it exist in it within the confines of its own whole thing. And as long as the, the, the short stories continue to be of the quality that they have been, and I know we've been a little down on some of the other ones that we've reviewed that are in this collection already, um, but these, I think, certainly made up for it in yeah. spades. Yeah. Uh, and so as long as you can get stuff of that quality, I'm fine with you including little excerpts and little nods and, and, and asides oh, yeah. and that kind of stuff because I think it really kind of helps to flesh out the, the lethbridge Stewart universe. Oh, absolutely. It's just a little, little more detail and uh, information that's great. I would agree. Now, there's one more story in this book, and we're going to actually we're gonna forego reviewing that one. It's called The Lost Skin, Episode 1. And it actually runs con- concurrently with uh, the story we'll be reviewing in a few weeks, which is Times Squared. Or Times Square. Squared. Squared. Times Squared, uh, which is the next book that's coming out. It'll be the first book in the Wait, next squared. series, right? Or is believe, it the last book? I believe that's the, correct. The next book in the first season. First, first book in the next season. So um, we've opted to, since they're kind of running together, uh, review those together with uh, Times Square. That being said, this is episode one, and at the end it says to be continued in <laughs> Avic Files 3, which is a little disheartening because of the way they're going, it'll be a full year before we get to Avic <laughs> Files 3. <laughs> uh, uh, although we got Havoc Files at the beginning of this year, and we're getting, actually not even the beginning, we got it in like April, didn't we? March or April? I don't remember. And then we've got this one. So it's not as big of a gap as I'm thinking it is, but I don't want to wait, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> the wilderness months. I don't want to wait. But we'll talk more about that when we review that one. So uh, hang in there because a review is forthcoming on the last story in the Havoc Files 2 book. All right, what do we got coming up on the schedule, Sean? Well, there's been a change in the programming on the schedule. Um, Originally, we were going to do Power of the Daleks, finally. Parts (laughs) one through three next week for Friday Night Who. And then uh, review some Titan comic stuff and some Big Finish stuff while we were kind of waiting for the rest of the story to come out. Unfortunately, 
my math was incorrect. And uh, <laughs> it will release this weekend here in the States, digitally, on Saturday. And means we can't do it for Friday Night Who. So, what we've determined we're going to do is jump ahead a couple of weeks. We had Megalos uh, slotted in, uh, which uh, would be a new one for Keith. Yay! We haven't got to this one new at all. Fourth. So it's a new fourth Doctor story, Megalos, uh, with Tom Baker. We're going to watch that for Friday Night Who this week. And then we will be reviewing Megalos next week on the podcast. Then we will do the first three parts of Power of the Daleks for Friday Night Who. Our show the following week will be Titan Comics, uh, the fourth Doctor miniseries, and the Big Finish uh, fourth Doctor uh, Adventures season two, number four, The Justice of Jack, Jal, Jack, I can't say it, <laughs> Jal XR. Jalxar, J A L X A R. You figure it out how to pronounce it. Um, then we will do the final three parts of Power of the Dogs for Friday Night. Who, uh, December second, followed with uh, our Lost in Time review of Power of the Daleks. So uh, the schedule is still accurate. We're just moving Megalos, leapfrogging Power of the Daleks with it, and then going to which. Depending on how you look at these things, good or bad, it means we will have a whole month of Troughton on Friday night, who? Because we're going to do Power of the Daleks, and then we're going back into Web of Fear. But, you know, hey. I don't think Keith will complain. I'm not going to complain a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's the schedule. Prepare for that. And, uh, of course, if you can uh, support us on Patreon, we'd appreciate it. We have a link on our uh, website. For those of you that are supporting us on Patreon, we appreciate it. Every bit of that money goes right back into this show. You can find a link on TravelingTheVortex.com. Anything else that we need to talk about before we wrap this one up, fellas? Keep up the good work. If you haven't supported Candy Jar Books by buying a physical copy, you should go do that. Yeah. It's available on their website, and we thoroughly enjoyed it and appreciate them, and uh, we appreciate you for listening. Absolutely. Yes. All right, that's going to do it for this week. Until next week, I'm Glenn. I'm Sean. Yeah, I'm Keith. Cheers. Good night, everybody. Be seeing you. Nothing in the world can stop me again. You have been listening to Traveling the Vortex. Doctor Who and all of its associated programs are owned and trademarked by the BBC. No infringement is intended or implied.